video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi flower friends and veggie friends. It's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I'm going over my vegetable seeds for the 2022 season. Okay, before we get into my seed packets, I wanna know what you guys are most excited to try this year. What are you trying new or what are you most excited about? Drop it in the comments and let me know because I love to hear what you guys are growing. This year I am going really strong with the veggies because last year I dropped the ball on some of them. I did okay in some instances, but in most cases I definitely just didn't grow the number of veggies that I wanted to grow. I was so focused on growing the flower farm and uh, I mean I did tens of thousands of flower seedlings that the veggies kind of took a back seat and by the time August came around and that's when I'm usually swimming in beans, zucchinis, and making dinner fresh from the garden every night, I was feeling it big time. So uh, yeah, I definitely am going strong with the vegetables this year. Uh, the majority of my vegetables I've ordered from Baker Creek, rareseeds.com. I also order from Johnny's on occasion, depending on how many seeds I need, because they tend to have the more wholesale numbers for tomatoes, because I do a seedling sale in early May as well. Right around Mother's Day, that's when people start to buy their vegetable starts and stuff for the gardens around here. Our last frost date is typically mid-May through Memorial Day. Depends on the season, you kind of just have to constantly keep your eyes out on the 10 day forecast around that time as to when to plant your garden out. So, all right, I'm really excited. And there are some things in here that are not vegetables that I'm trying for the first time and it'll be kind of like an experiment. I'm really excited about it. So I am going to be trying, I, I really had success a few years ago with celery and I'm gonna go ahead and give this Chinese white celery a try. It's amazing. It's a delicate and delicious Chinese variety with snow white stalks. And uh, guys, I don't know about you, but I'm constantly trying to get to the center of the celery to get the white crispy stalks. Celery and blue cheese is like one of my favorite snacks. So I'm hoping for uh, some delicious celery this year. Uh, lots of tomatoes. I don't remember ordering this, but apparently I did. This is Martino's Roma tomato and it's just a classic Roma. And this says that it tolerates early blight. I don't really see early blight, I see late blight, but you never know. That's good, right? A Genovese basil. I always have to grow the Genovese basil. I will uh, grow this for my seedling sale and for personal use. <laughs> I love basil. I have a few bags of these, I guess packets, a few packets of these Fisher's early corn. I guess it's earliest corn. What does it say? Uh, how many days? Okay, so I just looked this up and Fisher's earliest corn says ready to harvest in 70 days. That's awesome. I have a couple of packets of these because I know that if you don't plant quite a bit of corn together, the, the pollination usually is pretty off. So you can't just plant six or 12 corn. You have to plant several dozen close together. Oh, here's the other packet right here. So Fisher's earliest corn. And this is a second packet of that Roma tomato, Martino's Roma tomato. Got some mail in here. Don't know why I have packets of mail. <laughs> Apparently I just shoved it in to this right here. Oh, what do we have? <gasps> Kajari melons. Guys, I've grown Kajari melons a couple of years now and I think I was introduced to it first by Jess from Roots and Refuge and uh, it, it was so prolific and so juicy and delicious that I can't get enough of that. I grow that on a trellis. Next up on the list is Clemson Spineless. Okra. Now, okra is something that I have grown before and I've only harvested a couple of pods off of. So thinking I have to get it started maybe a little bit earlier, but it says direct seed after last spring frost. So we'll see. But you know what I bought the other day that was delicious? I From the grocery store, it was just on the shelf. Pickled okra. And they're delicious. I got the spicy ones, of course. And Brad and I were like, these are good. So if I end up having a good crop of okra, I'll pickle them. Ooh, Chinese red noodle beans. I have grown these before. I actually grew them up a trellis. I love the way they look dangling down from the trellis. It's very whimsical and magical and I will definitely be growing these next year. I think I might have some green ones in here too. Rutabaga, I am going to be attempting my root vegetables again this year. These are 85 to 95 days. They reach up to eight inches in diameter, which is amazing. And it says that it has good winter storage. So I have, this is one of my favorite cabbages to grow. I have successfully grown that. This is the 
uh, Hilton cabbage, yeah, the Hilton Chinese cabbage. I have a picture of me holding one of the ones that I grew a couple of years ago, I'll have to find that. And then I have actually a few flowers in here. <laughs> Shocking, I forgot, but let's go over the rest of these um, veggies that I have in my hand. Kohlrabi, super schmelz kohlrabi, check that one out. I love kohlrabi. I had never heard of it before until about five years ago. One of the local uh, like Amish farm stands was selling it and I was like, what the heck is this? So I Googled it and uh, turns out it's delicious. I bought a couple of them and I roasted them and they were really good. Aji <laughs> uh, I have a couple of peppers here. This one, I don't know how to really say it. Aji kachucha. Aji kachucha. It is beautiful and it is supposedly mild, not as hot as a jalapeno, but it's a really good uh, flavor for soups and maybe salsas and snacking on too. And then speaking of jalapeno, this one's called not a peño. This means that it looks and tastes just like a jalapeno, but it doesn't have the heat that comes along with some of them. And this is perfect for me because I go, I don't know if you guys watched the video of my, my mother and my grandfather and I went to the local farmer stand and bought an entire thing of jalapenos. I make homemade stuffed jalapenos and they're so delicious. And it's kind of like Russian roulette where there's a plate of them and you don't know which one's gonna be mild and which one's gonna be hot. But I like to watch everyone's face as we start to eat the homemade jalapeno poppers and uh, you can tell who has the hot one and who doesn't. But if I had some made out of the jalapenos that still has that delicious flavor, doesn't have the heat, Oh yeah, those are so good. They're one of my favorite snacks. I make them, I make enough of them so that we can have them all winter long. They freeze so well. Okay, here are the flowers that I have in my hand. Guys, I saw this sunflower on there and I about died. It's Astra Rose Cream Sunflower. This was new this year from Baker Creek and what does it say? Quilled pastel petals make Astra Rose an astounding and delightful spin on the beloved sunflower. It stands three and a half feet tall. So, woo, look at that. It's gorgeous. Okay, so then I, I saw these super duper echinacea. I thought I would try that. And it says that this is a perennial that will bloom first year. So, um, sorry for throwing some flowers in here, but I couldn't help it. And then I saw this balsam peppermint stick. Um, it's really pretty. I've never grown balsam before but I thought I would give it a try. Let me dive deep back into this bag here. There's still a lot in here. <gasps> I'm excited. Peas, check out these ones. I thought I would do some of these for my seedling sale. They're called Tom Thumb Peas and they grow and you can put them in little pots and keep them like on a patio and stuff. So I thought that would be perfect for um, some of my uh, seedling sale customers. I even have these little pots so I can do that as well. So that would be something to do. And then I have um, Brussels sprouts. I am going to attempt Brussels sprouts. Now I have this hoop house here and as much as I wanna go like super heavy with the flowers in it, which I'm going to, I really am tempted to try out some vegetables in there too, or maybe get a smaller hoop house just for veggies. Cause last year I did do my eggplants in my small green hoop house and they've, they grew better than any eggplants that I've ever grown in my life. Even though the rodents got to eat them before I did, the plants themselves were three and a half, four feet tall. And I've never done that before with eggplants because I have a flea beetle issue. But the flea beetles, they were like hidden from the flea beetles inside the hoop house, so. Oh, another rutabaga. This one's American Purple Top. It's uh, smaller than the one that I tried before, but uh, this is like a classic, beautiful rutabaga. I love rutabaga. It's one of my favorite vegetables. My father and I love it actually for Thanksgiving and stuff like that. We'll make mashed rutabaga as part of the meal, so. Trailing nasturtium, not a vegetable, but it is edible and it's something that I grow every year. I sold a lot of these at my seedling sale last year and then I planted an entire like 20 foot row of them. They're spicy, they taste like, like a spicy radish on salads. And they also are good at like protecting your crop from bugs because they are a trap crop, so fantastic. This is something I'm really excited about. I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's a cactus. I'm gonna try growing cactus from seed. I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, Gina did this a couple of years ago. It might've been last year, I can't remember. But um, they grow super slow, but 
they're really cute and they're all different so you never know what you're gonna get so um, the the whole process though is a little bit different so it says sow seeds in small clean pots with pasteurized cactus compost place pots in a sealed ziploc bag away from bright light uh, so yeah there's it's a little bit different than just putting them on a heat mat so away from bright light yeah so I thought we could grow some cactus maybe I'll start these seeds this week because like I said they take a long time there's another uh, I just got two packets of cactuses cacti cacti <laughs> more melons this one's called a model melon this is allegedly a superb Polish variety that is got green flesh with a very thick ar aromatic and it's very sweet coleus I am going to try some coleus from seed again you don't know what you're gonna get they're all different uh, colors so it says intense splashes of rainbow colors paint a gorgeous picture in the garden it sure does I've got a couple packets of this. Oh, cat grass. Oh, that's a heavy packet. Oh my God, there's so much in here. I'm gonna plant this for my cat because she's always trying to get stuff in my house. But if I plant cat grass, that'll kind of give her permission to, right? It's an ornamental barley that is grown as a house plant to entertain cats. So I've got, this will be one. All right, I'm gonna take this and my cactus and the coleus. I'm gonna start these ones. can start seeds snake bean check that thing out they grow up to like what 60 inches long and they're an inch and a half thick uh, I think they're just so cool apparently they taste like green beans I am excited to try this one out and now more about the sponsor of today's video it's Skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators explore new skills deepen existing passions and get lost in your creativity. Just this week, I booked not one, but two weddings and I'm nervous. I'm soaking up all of the wedding flower arranging info I can get my hands on, including this Skillshare course on modern flower arranging. Michael and Derek of Putnam Flowers had some great tips on processing flowers for longevity and how to tell a cohesive color story. It's really great stuff. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and new classes are always being added. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Oh, shocking, another flower. It is a gorgeous hollyhock. Absolutely love that one. Okay, so here is a Romanesco broccoli. It's one of those things that I've always wanted to grow and I've never tried, so I might as well give it a try. I always thought the Romanescos were cauliflowers, but this is broccoli. Interesting. I just, I guess I didn't really wonder. Oh! <laughs> rosemary! How clever. It's called rosy rosemary. Now, rosemary is known for being difficult to germinate, so I've got to read up on this, but I love rosemary and I love using it fresh all year long. So if I could actually get this to germinate, I might try to keep it inside all the time and maybe in my kitchen window as long as my cat doesn't eat it. Rosemary, yes. So this one is a melon that looks like a pumpkin. It's called Prescott Fond Blanc and it is four to nine pounds. It says that it has a very rich flavor. So I'm very interested in uh, seeing what this tastes like. Prescott Fond Blanc. I like growing different colored beans. So these are red swan bush beans. I've got a bunch of different beans over here. What is this one? This feels like a bean. Oh, nope, it's a pea. Lincoln peas. Sugar snap peas are, are one of my favorites. And uh, this is just one of many that I'll grow. Um, why am I putting them over there? Nope, nope, those are not, start those. That pile is for ones that I'm starting like tomorrow. Oh, another nasturtium. Look at this, how pretty this one is. It's called Tip Top Rose, and that is absolutely gorgeous. I did not do a pink one last year. I did a creamy yellow one and then an ivory one. Um, oh, speaking of, for this next one, take a guess. Germination can take one to four months. 
What do you think it is? Do, 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 do. It's banana! It's actually a pink banana. The glare of my light is crazy. It's a pink banana. Check that out. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I thought, why not try? Give that a shot. I'm gonna start that seed too, because if it takes one to four months to germinate, I better start it now. Okay, so in the rest, oh, I have another packet of that corn, so the Fisher's Early Corn. Uh, I have more peas. This is the Kelvedon. Regular jalapenos, because I do love regular jalapenos. I like the heat, but my kids love the flavor of jalapenos, but if they're too spicy, then they're a little bit too spicy. My free seed packet was Merlot lettuce. I have some carrots. This one's called the Cobal Coral Coral Carrot. Those ones look perfect. Of course they do. They're using the picture for the front of a seed packet. <laughs> of course it looks perfect. Oh, we've got another hollyhock. This one's another double hollyhock, a gorgeous color. This one's double carnival rosy red. Beautiful. And we have, ooh, canter beans. These are the canteri canter beans. They are um, beautiful. I like to can beans, so we're gonna be doing that as well. And then this last one is, I guess, not really a vegetable per se, but it's used medicinally. And I was hoping to use it for maybe some decorative pieces because it's called, I think Job's Tears. It's spelled J-O-B, like job, but I think it's Job's Tears. And they grow on like tassels. So it can be used in bouquets for like a, a hanging decoration, like a, a green filler. But then it says that the grain inside can actually be used to make necklaces. Like it dries like a pod and they're used for, um, for rosary beads and necklaces, but apparently it's also for food too. For medicine, this is traditionally used in folk medicine for arthritis and to remove heat. Maybe if you have like a hot leg or something like that, remove heat, interesting. I've never heard of this before, so. Okay, so that's this packet. There's more, but wait, there's more. So in here I have a lot of other things. Some of these packets are old. There are things like spinach. I have more of my Antigua eggplant that I grew last year that grew so well for me in the hoop house. I'll be planting more of those this year. Where's the other packet? I know there's more. Oh yeah, there's like 10 or 12 seeds left in there. Where's my other packet? Okay, lots of lettuces in here, uh, basil, leaf fennel, uh, but what, there's, I know that there's more. I have the long hot peppers that I did, they grew so well for me last year. I have the long hots, so I'll be doing those. There's, like, this is all old seeds, like radishes, watermelons, more lettuce, kale, stuff like that, lots of that. But I know I have another, um, more new seeds because I bought special things. I found them. They were tucked into my sunflower box. I was like, what the heck? Free seed cosmic purple carrots. I love the free seed from Baker Creek. Okay. We've got cream sausage tomato, which is a white tomato. I thought that would be kind of cool. These are, we're kind of going into my tomatoes now. <laughs> Sweetheart cherry tomato. It looks absolutely delicious. This is a 60 day cherry tomato. And it says that it's packed with sweetness and a rich berry like flavor. It's quite crisp and it, the vines on it are extra long, super high in sugar, strawberry shaped jewels. They're wildly productive and um, they resist cracking. So that's great. Cause I'm gonna tell you after a rain, almost all of my cherry tomatoes that were clearly ready, cracked. For tomatoes, I've got Abe Lincoln. Mortgage Lifter. Mortgage Lifter is amazing and so is Abe Lincoln. I will always grow these varieties. We have the Genovese tomato, which is kind of like the wrinkly one, beautiful. Cherokee purple and the Florentino. The Florentino is also a nice wrinkly tomato. People love that look. It has that heirloom look to it. And then because everyone at my seedling sale last year, instead of wanting specific varieties, they just wanted a beef steak. So this is a classic beef steak tomato. And that way when someone comes and they're like, I just want a beef steak, I can say, well, here's your beef steak. I also have another called the great white tomato. Mushroom basket. 
My mom loves these ones, and so I thought uh, I would grow this for her and give her some of these seedlings. Coming up on eggplants, we have diamond eggplant. That is a super dark skin, dark purple. Stunningly gorgeous. And then a white eggplant, Casper. Ooh, Casper the friendly ghost. So Casper is beautiful. It's medium sized, very attractive, smooth, mild mushroom flavor. Interesting. Delicious. And then this back here is another eggplant. Let me get it, I know I saw it back here. Uh, guys, this one's called a Thai lavender frog egg eggplant and they're only about an inch. They're the size of cherry tomatoes and I guess they're really good in like stir fries and stuff like that. So, wow, I'm excited about these ones. Okay, California Wonder Pepper. The one thing I didn't have at my seedling sale last year were bell peppers and people were asking for them. So I thought I would um, go ahead and start a few of them this year. That wasn't the one thing that I didn't have. I didn't really have any um, enough cucumbers either. I had a lot of people asking me for cucumbers, so I'm fixing that this year. Uh, Berry's Crazy Cherry Tomato it is crazy. Take my word. Take everybody's word. Anybody who's ever grown Berry's Crazy says, holy prolific. My mother-in-law had, I think, one last year, and she had cherry tomatoes out like in bowls all over her kitchen counter. Super productive. This one I got for my sister, and it's called a spoon tomato. Look at that. That is a spoon. Look how little. They're like M&Ms. A spoon tomato. I thought it was adorable and I thought I needed it. Uh, so this is the more pepper department. This one's called King of the North. Beautiful. We have Yellow Monster. That one's really cool too. Yellow and green. Uh, and then a peppercini. We love peppercinis in my family. I use pickled peppercinis in a lot of my recipes. Going for that. This, these next two I'm growing because I have a hard time getting broccoli to form large heads around here. So I thought, let's just try to grow the rapinis and the ones that stay small. So I'm going to be trying these basically broccoli stalks that are only supposed to form the small little heads. And I thought, hey, then I'll feel a little bit better about myself when it doesn't form a giant head of broccoli. Goals. Flowers. Ah. I have a couple flowers. Black Magic Cosmos. It's like glaring. I'm probably gonna have to put pictures on all of these. I didn't really wanna do that. Anyway, Black Magic Cosmos. Black Magic Cosmos are super expensive seeds. I think I have four seeds in here. Four seeds in this seed packet. Oh my guys, I found this. Lavender Beauty Phlox. It's like my annual phlox, but it's lavender. Oh, I'm so excited about it. And then the last one in my pile here is Thai Sweet Basil. And I'm gonna try using this for cut flowers as well as any sort of scrumptious eating. It says it's a complex, delicious, licorice flavor. So these are all my new seed packets. I have so many other ones from years past. And I use, I'm still planting tomato seeds that are 10 years old. I don't see a problem with it. But I've got so many cucumbers, like an apple cucumber. I've got Monica cucumbers. Um, so many. More beans, more tomatoes. <laughs> and I know, oh, bush beans. Provider bush beans, got those too. I also have San Marzano tomato seeds. Those are actually in a box from Johnny's that I haven't opened yet. It's, I just got a delivery the other day of some seed starting equipment that I'll open in another video. Um, so, some just plug trays and humidity domes and stuff like that. Oh, what else? Uh, lots of watermelon. Oh, beets. Early wonder beets. And I got, I ordered from Baker Creek um, eight more things the other day. I should probably read what they are. They're not here yet. I got a shipping notification though. They are not in this email. <laughs> here it is. Okay, yes. Chinese red meat radish, which this is what prompted the order because my sister said, hey, can you order me some watermelon radish? And um, that's basically what this is. But it's it, on the Baker Creek website, it's called Chinese red meat radish. But it basically looks like a giant watermelon. I got some zinnias and I purchased some of the red flint ageratum. And then 
and I got some golden beets because golden beets are fun. Anyway, that is my new seed haul of vegetable seeds for this year, and uh, it doesn't mean that I won't order any more, but I definitely am doing a pre-order for my seedling sale. I'm setting that up online using a platform called Local Line. I think I'll start seedlings for my seedling sale in uh, the first week of March. I started, I think, the second week in March last year, and I think everything was pretty decent. I think my peppers could have been a little bit taller, my eggplants could have been a little bit taller, but for the most part, my cucumbers and my watermelon and my pumpkins, those all looked pretty darn good. So I think early to mid-March is when I'll be starting for the seedling sale. Uh, I might start some other stuff a little bit earlier if I could plan on putting stuff in the hoop house. But anyway, my last frost date is, like I said, like Memorial Day is kind of when we trust it. Anyway, I think that's about it for my new vegetables this year. Um, I might be buying more packets. I don't know. It always happens. Ah. So most of this will be going inside of the deer fence because deer like to eat my vegetables around here. If I end up getting um, a new small greenhouse, like one of those green plastic ones like I had last year, which by the way, uh, was damaged in a storm. <laughs> but I have those three frames that, so I have that frame and I have two other frames that I could kind of put together and then just buy new plastic for. I mean, that's a possibility. So I can do that and maybe do my eggplants and my peppers in there, um, experiment, see what works well in there. But yeah, we'll see. I'm excited. So anyway, thanks for sticking around guys. We'll see you soon. Oh. Vegetable, vegetable, vegetable. Not sponsored by Perrier. Vegetable, 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 vegetable. That too, is that too, too, too corny? I've got corn in this bag. <laughs> that was corny. I feel like I'm a little off center here. Should I be a little bit higher? Oh, that's too high. <sighs> Baby, there ain't no camera high enough to keep me from getting to you, babe.